Okay guys, let's talk about the most epic and clever Star Wars space scene we've seen since the original trilogy. It occurs in this Star Wars Andor episode called Daughter of Ferex. For the first time in years, we have a Star Wars space scene that includes a little bit of world building, some suspense, tension, technicalities, tactics, and of course, a lot of surprising action. No, it's not a huge epic space battle with hundreds of ships, explosions, and what? Horses running on the hull of a Star Destroyer. No, none of that nonsense. So let's dive into this with a deep, geek-worthy over-analysis. And spoilers are ahead, so if you haven't seen Star Wars Andor, which takes place in the early days of the Rebellion before the Battle of Yavin and before Star Wars Rogue One, I recommend you watch it. But before we begin that deep rabbit hole of geekdom, I want to talk about the sponsor for this video, Pixel Starships. Most of my followers know this channel is mostly about starships and spaceships of various types. You all love them. In this game, Pixel Starships has a lot of them. This is basically a retro pixel art MMO, easy to play on mobile or your computer, and it's a nice relaxing kind of break from the more hardcore space game venues. There's plenty of PvE and PvP gameplay. From the beginning it lets you choose your playstyle, whether it be more combat oriented or benign like a miner. I choose pirate as you can probably tell here. Arr, yeah, that's me. As you can see in Pixel Starships, you have a whole starship and crew to manage. You add various rooms or modules for your next mission or battle. The game progresses in a way that is fun without being pay to win. And of course you can connect with millions of other players to trade, fight, or be space friends. The best part of this game for me is the variety of gameplay options it offers. There is always some new gameplay aspect that comes up as a pleasant surprise. And you can mostly put it down and resume your progress wherever you left off relatively easily. I find myself playing when I'm waiting for a 3D render to finish, waiting at a restaurant for some food, or just hanging out on the park bench, taking a break from one of my early morning walks. Now this game is frequently updated, and like I said, it isn't pay to win, but Starbucks is the universal currency that lets you upgrade and progress faster. If you download the game from my link in the description, you're going to get 100 free Starbucks. So check out Pixel Starships, and now let's get back to the Fox of the Rebels, Luthen, and his maneuver versus the Imperials. So things begin with Luthen, our mysterious and competent rebel operative, in his ship right after his meeting with Saul Guerrera, in orbit of whatever planet Saul is based from. He's in communication with his partner back in Kuroskant when his communications are cut off as if jammed, and then approaches a distinctly imperial looking ship, a Cantwell class Arrester Cruiser, a ship we've never really seen in any meaningful Star Wars scene, but a ship that exists with a brief glimpse of it in Star Wars Solo. It was also one of the first concept sketches of an Imperial ship, first sketched by Colin Cantwell when Star Wars was first created, hence the name of the class of the ship. This is a very welcome addition to the Imperial fleet. We have something that can patrol Imperial space without being something as oversized as a Star Destroyer, but smaller and smarter. With its prominent tractor beam projectors, it can pull over suspicious ships for boarding and inspections. Now, there are not yet complete stats on this thing, such as size, so I should mention that StarWarsRPG.com puts this thing at about 800 meters. Uh, to me this seems a bit large. That's about half the length of an Imperial Star Destroyer, and comparable to a Rendili Star Drive Dreadnought, overkill for its given role, to be sure. I suspect it's no more than 400 to 500 meters in length. This ship is built around the tractor beams. These large tractor dishes are the RT-17 tractor repulsor emitters. They're more prominent than even what may be on an Imperial Star Destroyer. It may be able to hold down things at longer range and greater strength than even a Star Destroyer. It also has three ion cannon turrets, one port, one starboard, and one ventral. So it could potentially hold down a ship with tractors and then hit it with these ion cannons which I suspect are large and powerful to truly disable the ship. It also seems to have a number of prominent antenna near the bridge. I suspect that these are powerful sensors, comms jammers, and communications equipment, all helpful for anti-pirate and patrol activities. Of course, this ship has various light laser cannons. No mention of turbo lasers in any of the researched data. This makes sense as the ship is not designed to destroy, but more to capture ships. And finally, there are two hangar bays. This ship carries two full squadrons of 12 TIE Fighters each, and a number of boarding craft, shuttles, and support craft. Now, while Luthen has his droid forge a transponder signal, the Cantwell powers up the tractor beam. Almost immediately, Luthen's ship 
is affected. But there is some interesting, what I would call, gameplay mechanics here. They keep referring to a tractor beacon, or establishing a tractor beacon. What is this beacon? My theory is that the tractor beam works in tandem with various sensors to calibrate the most effective tractor lock without ripping the target ship to pieces. This is establishing the tractor beacon. And to prevent damage, it would serve the target ship well to power off all its engines while the optimal tractor beacon is established. And of course, Luthen plays like he is a cheap hauler pilot. And with shoddy ship maintenance, he fakes out the port thruster sputter. This makes it harder to establish a non-lethal tractor beacon and generally causes a frustrating headache for the Imperial captain. Meanwhile, Luthen and his onboard droid have calculated the tractor force to be two. I love the attention to detail here. At this point, we have no idea what Luthen is going to do, only that he has a plan and he's gathering information while buying time in order to execute it. The forged Alderanian Trade Alliance transponder signal comes back as clear of suspicion. However, the Imperial captain is annoyed with Luthen by now and orders a boarding team for the practice. And then Luthen tells the droid to lock in reverse stabilizers on his throttle meaning he will throttle up to get full reverse stabilizers, and his ship lurches forward. Now here there may be some disconnect between what happens in the space scene and the dialogue as it is written, perhaps marking one of the only mistakes in the creation of this scene. In other words, judging by what we see here, Luthen should be saying, full thrust on my throttle, not reverse stabilizers. At any rate, whatever Luthen does here triggers the Imperial Captain to action and he orders the tractor force to fire. Now Luthen knows his ship may not have anywhere near the power or structural integrity to escape, so he prepares his countermeasures surprise. And it's simple, a number of metal flecks, perhaps highly reflective, kind of like a chaff launcher. In fact, this might be a chaff launcher, meant for getting missiles off his back. This is apparently very effective at both confusing the tractor sensors and pulling the debris right into the forward tractor dish and disabling it. As the tractor beacon fails, the captain is smart enough to get the air wing, interesting choice of words, out there fast. And we see some TIE fighters along with the TIE bomber launch. The TIE bomber is probably a TIE boarding craft variant. Finally, Luthen is free, and his meager hauling ship has another trick, a concealed laser turret. At this point, Luthen appears to be both piloting the ship in a randomly chaotic and evasive manner, and assisting the aim of the laser turret. This is some expert piloting. He probably is also operating with no shields, having put all his power into maneuvering. He maneuvers very close to the arrestor cruiser, and the other two tractor dishes, the ones that appear to be undamaged, never lock onto a ship, so why is that? I think maybe these tractor dishes are fixed mounted, meaning the entire ship has to be aligned with the target, and the other two dishes are not able to track and lock onto Luthen's ship. Perhaps these Cantwell class cruisers can lock all three tractor dishes onto much larger ships, but are certainly overkill for Luthen's ship. So as the ties go head to head, he has one final trump card. The wing structures adjust and some kind of laser beam slices through the TIE fighters as they pass by. Some fans are calling this the space lightsaber maneuver. Is Luthen's ship using lightsaber technology? I have no idea, but I will touch on this in a moment. Luthen's droid reports that the hyperspace coordinates are calibrated, and he's able to make the jump to light speed. Since it takes a while to calculate hyperspace jumps, it could be that the droid started on that calculation sometime prior. The Imperial Captain is left shocked after Luthen's harrowing escape. Let me go back and touch upon the ship's lightsaber weapons. In one of the earlier episodes, Andor comments that it doesn't seem possible that Luthen's ship has such a strong power yield. It is very likely that his ship has a highly unusual power source. Lore in the last several years has revealed that the Death Star itself uses kyber crystals, the same that are used in lightsabers, to help power its super laser. Perhaps the power source in Luthen's ship has something to do with kyber crystals. Now, Star Wars producers and even Star Trek producers, hear me. We need more of this. Yes, there are still a lot of kids that watch Star Wars, but most of us has grown up now. We want more smart adult Star Wars, more world building, more tactics, more psychology, more depth. Now in the short term, all of that may not get as many eyes on it 
as spectacular displays of force powers and explosions, but in the long run, it gives content that people remember and will come back to. Before I end this video, I just want to give another shout out to Pixel Starships, and remember that the link to get your free account with 100 Starbucks is in the description below. Of course, remember to like, subscribe, and to leave a comment. I cannot read all of your comments, but they are a big source of my personal entertainment, inspiration, and ideas. So until next time, space friends.